Yes, class. Am I audible to all of you? Abdul, Nuha, Nina. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. All right. So in the last class, we had completed work out of the lesson of work, energy, and power. We have completed this portion of work done. So what was work done? Work done was basically for the dot product of force and displacement. This was uh, this is what we did, and the second thing that we noticed was uh, the graphical part. This was the question also which we had stopped. Work done is area under the graph. Whenever you have to find out the work done, work done is basically area under the graph. Now let us start with energy. When we are starting with energy, firstly we have the concept of mechanical energy. Now, what is meant by mechanical energy? Mechanical energy means sum of all the energies which are present. There are so many energies that are present in your system. So mechanical energy is the sum of all the energies which are present. Now see, in a system, whenever you are considering a system, there are many energies present. Entropy is present, internal energy is present, kinetic energy, potential energy, many energies are present. But right now, in your lesson in class 11, here we'll be focusing on kinetic energy and potential energy. These two energy will be there, which will be our focus areas. Now, sum of kinetic energy and potential energy means in a system which whatever is the amount of kinetic energy that is acting whatever is the amount of potential energy that is acting net energy is known as the mechanical energy or you can simply say total energy also fine so we'll start first with kinetic energy and then potential energy. As I told you already that work done and power, these are very small topics. The largest topic here in this lesson is energy. So let us start with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy means what? Kinetic energy basically means if, a mo if the motion begins, then whatever is the energy that is coming into your system. Understood? Uh, if the body is at rest, so velocity will be zero. So kinetic energy will be zero. How can you understand this fact is by the formula of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy's formula is half mv square. We'll derive it. I'll tell you this derivation comes in your exam. So you have to know this. See, if velocity is zero, there isn't any change in velocity. So no kinetic energy will be present in your system. For kinetic energy to be present, you have to have a certain amount of velocity. Acceleration, rest of the factors will come automatically. So you first know you have to identify the reason because ultimately in your exam, you will be getting questions on mixed energy. You will be getting questions to calculate mechanical energy. You can get questions to calculate just the energy. So you have to identify whether it would be kinetic energy or it would be poten potential energy, right? So that's why the cause you have to know. So energy possessed by a body due to motion is called kinetic energy. Now, there is a theorem both for both kinetic and potential. So first understand for kinetic, understanding of potential energy will automatically become easy. Work energy theorem basically means that whatever is the change in work done, whatever is the work, whatever work is being done, force into displacement, entire work done which we have studied, that is being done. This is equal to the change in kinetic energy. See, when the body begins the motion, there must be an initial kinetic energy. There must be an initial velocity. So because of that initial velocity, we'll have initial kinetic energy in our system. Yes. Then uh, when the body will stop, before stopping, the particular body will be having a certain amount of energy. So that is known as final kinetic energy. Final velocity will give rise to final kinetic energy. Right. So that's why there's now there's a change in the kinetic energy. Final minus initial. This change is actually equal to the work. So always remember work gets stored in the form of any type of energies. That is a very big clue to solve all the numericals. Just calculate work done, convert it into energy, equate it with energy. Your answer will be. So anyways, let's start with this derivation of kinetic energy. Then you people can note it down. Just first pay attention over here. Then afterwards, you can write it down. Initially, a block is there of mass m. Initial velocity v1, I have taken as v1. And v2, that is the second velocity, I have taken it as v2. Now, uh, one thing that I discussed with you all was the work done's equation if force is variable. So we take f dot dx. 
Now let us assume the body has displaced from x1 to x2. So we'll integrate it from x1 to x2. Now body will be having acceleration also. Velocity is there. Body will be having acceleration also, right? So what is the force equal to Newton's second law? Remember, F is equal to ma. This you can substitute in from here. Understood? F is equal to ma. So once you put in the value over here, this work done, this will become ma dx integrating from x1 to x2. All right. What is the formula of acceleration? Acceleration is basically rate of change of velocity. That is dv over dt. Acceleration is dv over dt. Rate of change of velocity is acceleration. Whatever is the amount of velocity that is changing with respect to time is what is acceleration. This is what you have been studying already. So let us substitute in the values. Why are we doing this? Why are we continuously doing this? We are doing this because we cannot integrate it like this. Right? You cannot integrate, integrate acceleration with dx. We want to have in our final answer, either we should come, either this should become dv or this should have x. Then only integration is possible. In, if come on, integrate this, you will not be able to do a dx. This can never be integrated. You have to have either x dx. This can be integrated or you have to have v dv. Or if you are having acceleration, then ADA means rate of change of acceleration here, rate of change of velocity here. If rate of change of distance is here, if this is displacement, then here also has to be displacement. Otherwise, if you cannot arrange for displacement, then change displacement, get velocity. That's what I'm trying to do. Because display, getting displacement is not possible. Please be clear with this fact class. Whenever we are performing integration, this is a very basic rule of integration. You cannot integrate to other quantities. Now put in the values m dv over dt dx integrating from x1 to x2. Now still this is a problem. Still also we are not able to integrate it. dv dot dx, you cannot integrate dv dot dx. I told you either v dv or x dx. Class, can any one of you tell me what is this dx over dt? Anyone? This quantity that we are obtaining over here. What is this? Do people have studied in detail about this quantity? dx over dt. Yes, what is dx over dt? Lena? Yes? Differentiation is there, Abdul. That is correct. But differentiation of displacement with time gives you what? That is what I'm asking. This is correct. Different Here we are differentiating. You are differentiating displacement with respect to time. So whose formula was this? Try to recall, Abdul. You also have done it in detail. Velocity. Very good, Maria. Very good. Velocity. Velocity is dx over dt. Acceleration is dv over dt. If you people cannot identify v is equal to dx over dt, then doing this lesson is of no use. First, go revise your motion in a straight line. v is equal to dx over dt. a is equal to dv over dt. These are very basic formulas. These will be used despite other lessons being present. So now substitute in the value. This becomes m. Now look, dx over dt becomes v. And what was obtained over here? dv. Now can you notice? Now at least we can integrate v dv. I told you now this you can integrate. These are similar variables. Mass is a constant term. Bring mass outside. Integrate dv with... Uh, and yes, one more thing. C class. Now once we have changed it into velocity, we cannot put the values of displacement. We'll also change displacement simultaneously. So this integration with autom as soon as you substitute this integration with will automatically change to v1 to v2. Fine. 
Now this becomes C M is there. V to the power one is there. What did I tell you? See the basic rules of integration. I'm constantly revising it. So all those who are forgetting it, please. Anything if you're not able to understand, stop me there and there. X to the power n becomes here. You add plus one. So if it is V, V one is there. If nothing is mentioned, it means this is V to the power one. So V to the power one. So plus one. Next step divided by n plus one, divided by one plus one. What are the limits from v one to v two? So this becomes m v square by two limits v one to v two. Then first put the upper limit in place of this variable. This work done will become half m v two square minus. Half m v one square. Can you see this is the change in kinetic energy? Final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy is coming as the change in work done. So we have proved this equation correctly. Work energy theorem. This is the proof of work energy theorem, and this comes a lot. This is very important. How to prove that change in uh, kinetic energy is actually equal to work done? So this change gets stored in the form of kinetic energy. So your formula of kinetic energy you already know is half m v square and its change is equal to change in work done. Now class, write it till here. There is a case where kinetic kinetic energy gets related to momentum, but that we will see later. First, you write it down. Process this much part. Any issues are there? Let me know. And class, please clear your basics. Wherever you people are not understanding, like d x over d t, some things like this. So just text me so that it, extra classes also can be arranged for you, right? Some uh, classes I'll already take. In any ways, let us just complete a bit portion of your syllabus. Then, as I told you, we you will have extra classes also for motion in a straight line, motion in a plane, laws of motion. At least these three. But a uh, motion in a straight line and a motion in plane, we definitely we have to take class because you people are forgetting. Also, some students also have to take their uh, backup classes.
C class. Now I told you there is a relation between momentum and kinetic energy. So this formula is there. Kinetic energy is equal to P square by 2N. Now based on this formula, you get questions. That's why I wanted to discuss. So P is momentum. Momentum we have discussed. Mass into velocity. And M is what? M is the mass. Do not forget the formula of momentum. Mass into velocity. So see, if we are talking about the initial kinetic energy, so it will be P1 square by 2M. When we are talking about the final kinetic energy, it will be P2 square by 2M. Like this, you will have different values of kinetic energy. Suppose the question, this is an example, change in momentum is 10%. So you have to find out change in kinetic energy. So such questions, how will you handle it? Uh, momentum is, how much momentum it has changed? 10% of P1. So P2 will become P1 plus 10 by 100 P1. This is equal to 110 P1 by 100. So this is equal to 1.1 P1. So P2 is equal to 1.1 P1. Fine. This is the relation between the new momentum and the uh, initial momentum. Now see, let us substitute this value in the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy 1 is P square, P1 square square by 2M. Now kinetic energy 2 will be P2 square by 2M it was. So P2 square by 2M. See, remember, this is P2 square by 2M. Now P2's value we have obtained. So that becomes 1.1 P1 whole square by 2M. All right, so this becomes 1.21 P1 square by 2M. At least now we have both in terms of P1. Now see, once you have this, you know how to cal calculate the percentage. Final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. That is the change in kinetic energy divided by the original kinetic energy into 100. This is the formula that you have to calculate. So look, this will be final is 1.21 P1 square by 2M minus, uh, this was P1 square by 2M divided by P1 uh, square by 2M. So let's take P1 square by 2M common from here. This becomes P1 square by 2M taken common, 1.21 minus 1. From here already P1 square by 2M is there. Brackets will be cancelled. This becomes 0.21. For percentage change, we multiply it to 100. So 0 0.21 into 100, this will be equal to 21%. Like this, you have to calculate all the questions. Momentum, relation with kinetic energy is also very important. One more question also we'll practice based upon the formula of half mv squared and momentum also. Write it down first from here. This is clear now how to uh, use uh, momentum and find out the change in kinetic energy. Kudeja, is it clear to you? Kudeja, understood? Yes, ma'am. Khadija, what about you? You have also joined late today. Clear, Khadija? Yes,
See, uh, this question says that a bullet weighing 10 gram is fired with velocity of 800 meter per second. See, when it passes through a wall, which is one meter thick, so the velocity, which was initially 800 meter per second, now it becomes 100 meter per second. So you have initial and final velocity. You have the displacement that the bullet has to cover because you know, or you already know the thickness of the wall and the weight also. So you have to first find the change in kinetic energy. See, this is this separation is one meter. Initial velocity, this is 800 meter per second. Final velocity, this decreases to 100 meter per second. See, when velocity decreases, one more thing, this I think I had discussed also in motion in a straight line. Whenever your velocity decreases, it means there's a negative acceleration in your system. And for negative acceleration, we have the term retardation. So if velocity is increasing, it's acceleration. If velocity is decreasing, it's retardation. That is deacceleration. Now, initial velocity is given. So by this formula, we can find out initial kinetic energy. That Sorry. is half. Now, 10 grams. 10 grams can be written as 10 into 10 to the power minus 3. Why? Because we have to convert 10 grams into kg. Grams is a unit that is not uh, acceptable in our SI unit. We have to convert it into kg. So half m and v1 square is 800 square. But uh, just let's not expand this so much. See, what we can do instead of writing this whole term. No, wait, let us write it in one line. Change in kinetic energy will be final minus initial. So half m will be common. V final square minus V initial square. This will be left. So now in one go only, we'll have our answer. 10 into 10 to the power minus 3. V2 square is 100 square. Uh, this is 100 square minus 800 square. Like this in one line. We, we have. So this is equal to minus 300. 15 joules. Just check once again if there is an any uh, if there is any error, please inform me. Second part says that what is the work done? This was the first part, no change in kinetic energy. Second part says work done. So according to the uh, work energy theorem, we know work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So work done is equal to minus 315 joules. Uh, average resistive force occurred. See, class, work done is force into displacement also. What is work done? Work done we have calculated from this. That is minus 315 joules, right? Uh, also, class, here we will take the magnitude. The sign is not necessary. Magnitude will be sufficient, though you can take. See, why are we neglecting the, the negative sign? Actually, negative sign is present. It's just that we are substituting angle. Let me tell you this first. When we'll make it as, see, when the bullet is moving here, displacement is occurring here towards the wall. That is the right side. For me, it's the right side. Resistive, if a bullet is moving, and the wall is offering a little resistance while it is going inside. When the wall is there, the bullet is coming and there is a slight resistance that is felt by the wall. So resistance won't be in the same direction. Otherwise, it won't be resistance. It would be facilitation of the movement. Here it is resistance. So resistance will be in opposite direction. This is the resistive force. So what is the angle? Angle is 180 degrees. So this becomes work done is minus 315 joules. Force is F. Uh, displacement was 1 meters into cos 180 degrees minus 1. Fine. So this gets minus 1 minus 1 gets uh, divided. That becomes 315 Newton. This is the That completes kinetic energy. Just one or few points I have to discuss before starting with potential energy. So write it down. Question you people have already written. Write down the solution.
now uh, c class this i didn't discuss with you the types of work done work done uh, can be positive negative or zero so i discussed this with khadija and uh, abdul i think see uh, when the angle is acute uh, acute angle means the angle is less than 90 degree so when this acute angle is present then cos theta will be positive so theta is acute here you get positive work done in contrary on contrary to this when the angle is more than 90 degree you get negative work done because cos theta becomes negative so work done also becomes negative and the last type is zero work done zero work done means see two cases are possible either it can happen that theta is 90 degree that is suppose the displacement is occurring in this direction and force that has occurred is perpendicular so see this makes it 90 degree or it can it is possible either displacement is zero or the applied force is zero so there is no work done so these are the three types of work done which are possible quickly write these down 